Hello everyone, this is Ray Warda, Outreach and Marketing Director for BLB Resources, a HUD Asset Manager. I'm having a great day and I thank God that I woke up this morning and I hope you're doing fabulous yourself. As a licensed California real estate broker myself and working in the real estate asset management industry specifically in conjunction with the U.S. Department of HUD contracts, I've learned one important thing. Change is imminent. Now, it's there, it's known, and it's going to happen. We just have to understand to become familiar with it so that way it provides us with the confidence to relay this message to our buyers and or if you're a buyer watching, to relay that message to your family, business partner, or significant other. In today's short video, I'll provide a summary and an explanation of the new HUD Mortgagee Letter 2015-17, which is subject titled, HUD REO Purchasing. Now, don't worry, sometimes it becomes overwhelming with all these changes, but I'm here to help you. I remember when it was the first time I started working with HUD contracts about a little over five years ago, I was like, what in the world is all of this? I had no clue about what a HUD home was or what the sales process was like. Now, don't get me wrong, I have a lot of experience in real estate and lending as I'm a California licensed broker myself, but HUD homes were foreign to me. You know what I mean. Just think about the first time when you saw a HUD home. I bet you even avoided them in the beginning. Well, my goal today is to make it easy for you to understand the changes that affect the HUD sales process and your buyers. So let's take a look at what this new HUD mortgagee letter 2015-17 is all about. So let's get started. Mortgagee Letter 2015-17 has made some changes to the previous Mortgagee Letter 2013-44. There's about six changes that I'm going to discuss with you today, and here's a summary of what we're going to go through. Okay. First, this Mortgagee Letter rescinds the changes to the calculation of the maximum mortgage, mortgage amount for the purchase of a HUD REO property established in Mortgagee Letter 2013-44, for example, the requirement to use the initial list price. So it has a change, and I'm going to go through exactly each change one at a time so you have an understanding of what I'm talking about. This also eliminates the use of the list price of the HUD REO property in determining the maximum mortgage amount, which is a very important part of this particular mortgagee letter that you will be aware of. It is effective for endorsements on or after September 14, 2015, including pipeline applications. So let's take a closer look on change number one. Now, the current the, the change number one the policy was in regards to the REO appraisal that's the REO appraisal that we ordered as the asset manager previously with a previous mortgagee letter 2013-44 the REO appraisal our REO appraisal was used to establish the REO list price and was used to calculate the maximum mortgage amount well with this new mortgagee letter 2015-17 the revised requirement states that the REO appraisal that we order as the asset manager is used to establish the list price only. So it no longer establishes the, uh, the calculate the maximum mortgage amount. So keep that in mind. That's why the, when the buyer goes out and gets their own FHA uh, appraisal via their lender, now that particular appraisal that they get will set the calc uh, will set the calculate the maximum mortgage amount. Okay, so our appraisal that we have is only used to establish the list price only. So this is actually a great benefit to the buyer. And there's an upcoming uh, in the next few slides. I think it's change number five that relates to this particular. Uh, change number one, where I'll provide an example for you so that way you have a better understanding of what exactly I'm talking about. Let's look at change number two. Change number two is in regards to ordering a new appraisal. Okay, that's the policy. Now, the existing or the past requirements were that a new appraisal was 
ordered only when permitted, only when an REO appraisal was not available, or the REO appraisal was expired, or the REO appraisal had material deficiencies. Well, with this mortgagee letter 2015-17, a new appraisal is required for all FHA insured REO sales transactions. So that means that your buyer, if they are going to be obtaining FHA uh, mortgage, will have to order their own appraisal and of course pay for it based on their own expense. So please keep that in mind. Let's look at change number three. Change number three, the policy was the responsibility for determination of the compliance of properties with minimum property requirements. Now, the past mortgagee letter, 2013-44, the responsibility of determining the compliance of properties with minimum property requirements were the responsibility of the REO asset manager and the underwriting mortgagee. Okay, well with this revised new uh, mortgagee letter, it is the responsibility only of the underwriting mortgagee only. Okay, so the underwriter technically has the final say-so of what items will be included in the minimum property requirements and the amounts that will be included. So keep that in mind. Now I do want to advise you to always go back to the disclosures on the HUD listing to see what we disclosed as a part of our appraisal and some of the min uh, minimum property requirements that came up on our appraisal and you may want to compare with that because you know our appraisal might have a little difference um, minimum property requirements than the, uh, the buyer's appraisal. So just keep that in mind. Look back to our HUD disclosures that are on the listing site itself. Okay, change number four, the, it's got to do with the policy of the loan to value ratio for investment properties. Okay, so the past mortgagee letter uh, for loan to value ratios, maximum for one unit was 75%, and two to four units were 85%. Well, with this new revised uh, document, the Mortgagee Letter 2015-77, it's straight across the board for anything one to four unit investment properties, 75% is a max loan to value. So the buyer would have to come up with 25% down uh, if they are purchasing a property as an investment that is residential, of course, properties, uh, one to four unit investment properties. So keep that in mind. Let's move on to change number five. Change number five has to do with the maximum mortgage amount. And this is where I'm going to give you an example as I stated from the change number one, which relate together. Now, the existing requirements, the maximum mortgage amount is based on the lesser of three things, the appraised value, the sales price, or the original REO list price. However, with this new revised mortgagee letter 2015-17, the maximum mortgage amount is solely based on the adjusted value. So that means that the buyer's new appraisal that they order, that will be what the actual maximum mortgagee amount will be. Okay, so for example, if you have a bid that you bid on a home at $100,000, and let's just say your buyer went and got an appraisal and the appraisal came in at $100,000. Well, their bid amount was $100,000, their appraisal was $100,000, so that becomes a wash, we're good, that's the ma more, uh, the maximum uh, mortgage amount that will, the lender will lend on. Uh, so therefore there is no out of pocket excessive cash that they would have to bring in besides their own down payment that re that's required by FHA and or any closing costs and stuff like that. So there is no additional money that they would have to come out of uh, pocket with. Now let's just take a second example here on a, let's just say your buyer bid on a home and has a winning bid of $100,000. They went out and got their own appraisal and that appraisal now came in at 95000 well, because that buyer had to go purchase their own appraisal, of course, based on this mortgagee letter, the maximum mortgage amount that the lender will lend on is based on the adjusted value of the new appraisal. So that $95,000 appraisal will be the maximum mortgage amount. So if the buyer bid $100,000 and their appraisal comes in at $95,000, there's a $5,000 difference 
in the form of cash that the buyer has to come up with at the time of closing. And that's out of the buyer's pocket. And they, they must be aware, of course, that is additional to whatever FHA down payment requirement is and or any closing costs that are also in, uh, included in the transaction. So keep that in mind. Make your buyers beware. This is actually a benefit to the buyers. So it's nothing that is um, a detriment. It's actually a benefit. Uh, this is a good thing and good change that happened that will help many more buyers that are going through financing, uh, through FHA financing, that will help them get into these homes uh, a lot easier than it was before. Now, last change, change number six, it was uh, in regards to the policy of financing upfront mortgage insurance premium on $100 down loans. Well, at this time, please keep in mind, please be advised, that BLB Resources manages assets in the state of states of California, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, Hawaii, Alaska, and Michigan. And as of today of this recording, uh, September 29th, uh, none of, ne neither of these states have the $100 down uh, loan program. So this really has does not pertain to any particular uh, properties that are HUD listings uh, that are $100 down because those don't exist in our areas that we cover. However, unless it applies, of course, to only GNND properties. And what GNND properties are, are properties that are good neighbor next door properties that are technically a incentive for four types of employees which are the um, industries of law enforcement, emergency medical tech, firefighters, and teachers. So if your buyers fall into those four categories and the particular HUD home that they like or they're looking at, it uh, falls in a revitalized area and it is labeled on HUDHomestore.com as a good neighbor next door property, then that property will have a 50% discount for that winning bidder and they will be able to do the $100 down loan program on that particular property if it's eligible for good neighbor next door. So the uh, the, the recent um, mortgage letter 2013-44, it was only if the total amount did not exceed the appraised value. Well, with this new summer, with this new change on this new mortgage letter, financing upfront mortgage insurance premium on $100 down loan programs on GNND properties, the upfront mortgage insurance premium may be financed with absolutely no restriction. So that right there gives you a summary. And, you know, these are some big changes that have occurred with this new mortgagee letter 2015-17, which really, like I mentioned, is a benefit to your buyer that is purchasing a HUD REO. And I, I really hope this particular um, video was a great learning experience for you. If you ever have any questions regarding this mortgagee letter or any questions in general about HUD REO or the HUD home sales process, please feel free to email me personally at rwarda, R-W-A-R-D-A, at blbresources.com, and you see it on your screen right there. Again, it's rwarda at blbresources.com, which you see on your screen. But for now, I will leave you with a quote by Winston Churchill that says, To improve is to change. To be perfect is is to change often. So folks, I thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for your time. I hope to see you soon at one of my live events. Have an extraordinary day, folks. Take care.